Okay, we're going to do um, part three here of the unit four review. This will be pretty quick. It's just questions 31 through 36. Um, part two only went to 30. So let's turn this over. So question number 31, there's a lot of work on that one. You can watch that on the previous video. Which of the following formulas represents an ionic compound? Well, ionic compounds have a metal with a nonmetal. So when you look on your periodic table, both of these are nonmetals, so that's going to be covalent. I'm just going to label that as covalent. Nitrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals, so that's another covalent. Barium. Now barium is on the left side of the periodic table, way over here, so there's a metal, and oxygen is definitely a nonmetal, so that will be ionic. And then we got carbon and sulfur. Those are both. Can't get too much more non-metal than that, so that's going to be a covalent compound. Which of the following formulas represents biological molecular compound? So we're really asking which is covalent. That was number 32 up there. So you just got to, they got to have all non-metals. Barium oxide, nope. We just said that was ionic, no. Sodium chloride, that's a metal. Sodium's a metal, no. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, yeah, okay, that's that's covalent, or a molecular compound, because technically these are not molecules. You can call them a formula unit. And over here, two nonmetals, so that can be, that's covalent. Let's see, number 33, make sure we're back over here. Covalent bonds are made between which two types of elements? Nonmetal bonded to non-metal. Nothing shows it better than the chart we've been working with all through this unit. We've got this one. You want to make sure that's on your summary page. And right there would be the zigzag line separating the metals from the non-metals. Let's see. What happens with electrons in an, when an ionic bond forms? Well, in an ionic bond, electrons are thrown from metals or cations to nonmetals or anions. So metals throw their electrons over there. They give their electrons away. And then what happens is, with the example of salt, when sodium gives up its electron, it becomes a plus charge. Chlorine gains that electron. It becomes a negative charge. They're attracted to each other. They both think they're a noble gas. So you get a very stable compound. Number 35, metals form positive ions, nonmetals form negative ions. And let's see, what's the chemical formula when calcium, that's Ca, bonds with oxygen? Is this an ionic or a covalent compound? Well, calcium's a metal, so that and oxygen's a nonmetal, so that'll be ionic. And let's see, when these bond together, let's see, calcium I'm going to draw its Lewis structures. It's in group two of the periodic table. It has two valence electrons. Oxygen is in group 16 of the periodic table. It has six valence electrons, excuse me. And so what happens is perfect match. One calcium perfectly gives its electrons to oxygen. So you'd end up with calcium plus two because it's lost two positive charges bonded to oxygen that's gained two negative charges. Altogether, that adds up to zero, and you got a stable compound. There you go. We're done.